All right, time has started. So, it is that time of year where you want to get your ginger honey tea. All right, so today we're going to be talking about counting the cost and the price of obedience. This is just part one of three. Um, you really want to tune in for the Bible study this week. Uh, just to give you a heads up, we're going to be coming from 1 Timothy 4. If I can find where I've written it, give me a second, I'll let you know exactly. I was taking notes yesterday. Yes, 1 Timothy chapter 4. So about Wednesday, Thursday, um, that Bible study would be up just to give you guys a heads up. Go and read that chapter, 1 Timothy chapter 4. That's going to be the, uh, the read for this week. But today, we're going to talk about counting the cost, and this is part one of three. So we're going to be starting right at um, Moses and Pharaoh. And I want to start off with um, this question. What will take priority in your life? Will it be God's purpose that has been revealed to you? Meaning that when God has told you something is for you and you go against it, are, are you operating in his purpose? Are you still stuck in the world? Or is it what you desire for your life and how your will will be done? Meaning what you want. Like if God told you to move to Guatemala and open a school. Are you going to say, well, I never wanted to go to Guatemala. I'll be just fine where I'm at. God. Is that what you're going to follow? Because I hear a lot of people and I've met a lot of people that'll say that they, you know, they'll sell out for God, they'll sell out for followers of Christ, but God will tell them something and they will deliberately go against it. Never understood that. If God tells me something, I go full forward to it, no fear, because I'm with him in it. Um, but people just mess stuff up. People mess stuff up and then expect for you to stay in it because God told you to go forward in it. No. Uh -uh. I've done my part. I've done my part. You know, um, and this is just an example. Yeah. You know, I've done my part. If you want to mess that up, that's on you. Don't be surprised when he removed me from that situation. All right. So our first scripture we want to talk about is Romans 8, 28. And it reads, and we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are who are the called according to his purpose. And this is kind of like a precursor to what we're going to get into um, right now with um, Exodus chapter one. Now, in the beginning, the children of Israel were in Egypt with Joseph. Right. Um, once Joseph died, the Pharaoh that arose after his death. So this is a Pharaoh that didn't know about Joseph. And, you know, a little backstory. We know that Joseph was a, was a um, dream interpreter. Uh, you know, he was sold into captivity by his brothers who were really jealous because he had this dream where uh, he, he, you know, he told his mother and father about it. He said that uh, the sun and the moon, which is representative of the father and the mother, were bowing down to this, uh, this straw of hay that he had erected. Even the hay that his brothers had uh, created were bowing down to Joseph's hay. So his brothers got extremely jealous. Um, sold him into captivity. Well, they, they didn't sell him. They tried to kill him. So they led him uh, in this valley. They tried to kill him. Last minute, his oldest brother actually saved his life. So again, uh, the scriptures up here, Romans 8, 28, we're seeing come into life here. Um, and even though he was supposed to be killed, his older brother, God moved his heart. And we see that in Exodus as well, how God is hardening Pharaoh's heart and doing things like that. Um, he changed his heart last minute so that Joseph's life would actually be saved and spared. Um, so instead of dying, he was actually found by, I guess, some, uh, some slave tradesmen, uh, in, in which case he ended up in Egypt. And, um, 
because of his ability, his spiritual gift of dream interpretation, he became one of the uh, Pharaoh's men after interpreting the dream for him. So that's a little backstory on Joseph. So uh, here we are talking about how after um, after uh, Joseph died, so there are no more Pharaohs that have witnessed this gift that God has put on him. So in Exodus 1.10, it says, This new Pharaoh said, Let us deal wisely with them, lest they multiply. So let us be cautious with the children of Israel. Because at this point, they're beginning to see the children of Israel as a problem, which should remind you of something. <laughs> it really should remind you of something. Like civil rights movement, um, slavery, and even how... Um, melanated people are uh, treated today. If you look up the uh, legal definition of black, it means chattel, property, dead. It means you don't have a right by claiming to be a black person. So we, we really need to take that out of our vocabulary and re uh, and, and rebrand it. And then that's the trick of, uh, of the enemy, to have you all call yourselves something so that they can have control over you. So um, going on here, it says, least they multiply, meaning that they grow in numbers. And in uh, Exodus 1, 9, in this scripture, the Pharaoh shows a fear of the children of Israel. In this scripture, he states the people of the children of Israel are more and mightier. So this is the strength in the multitude. Remember, going back into Genesis 1, 28. Uh, with, with, with the original people, Adam and Eve, it says that and God blessed them to be fruitful and to multiply. So the blessing is here. There's plenty of children because they've multiplied abundantly. So much so that the uh, that the Egyptians, the pharaohs, they are they are in fear of these people <clears throat> because their numbers are clearly much greater than. And again, we see the correlation with um, how our people are treated today um, here in America. You know, you, people can say whatever they want to say. Um, you know, I believe that you know, all these assassinations are tied into who we truly are as a people. And it, it uh, comes alive in these scriptures here because it's, it's a, such a scary parallel. That you can watch uh, a melanated man, um, a darker tone man, uh, get killed. You know, an officer can enter the wrong apartment and can shoot this man dead in his house. And they don't throw away the key. I'm not sure what happened to that woman. I don't follow uh, mainline news media. Last I heard, there was a trial. She was supposedly out. This was a couple of years ago, but... It's just, it's, it's very ironic. Very ironic. So, going back to scripture here, Exodus 1 9. So, he shows a fear when he says the people of the children of Israel are more and mightier than we, being the Egyptians. That's what he means by we. So, he, they are, they're stronger, definitely stronger. There are a lot more of them than the Egyptians, right? So and then we go into Exodus one twelve, and it says, "But the more they are afflicted, so the more they are caused pain, the more they multiply and grow." So it's through adversity that the children of Israel are thriving through adversity that they are still growing. So it takes us back to Romans eight twenty eight. Remember, this is like the precursor for this right here. And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are called according to his purpose. So we know the children of Israel, the chosen people of God, they are the ones who have been called. And we see that even through their anguish, even through their affliction in Egypt, that they, uh, that they are doing, this new Pharaoh's doing unto them, they are still thriving. They are still multiplying. And it is ticking the Pharaoh off. So much so that uh, we get the uh, we get what's going to happen with Moses after 400 years. So that was Exodus 1:12. So uh, 14 to 22. Uh, read those for the hardships that the children of Israel endured in the beginning and going all the way down throughout the um, 400 years, and and it was caused by Pharaoh, and this is all because um, Joseph died. <clears throat> 
Joseph died, so there was no more advisor, no there was no advocate unto the uh, pharaohs for the children of Israel, and uh, really there wasn't anyone for uh, God to work through, because at this point the children of Israel they had been put into so much labor, they had built all their temples uh, to their false gods. They were uh, they, they were basically the uh, slave class or the, the the lower income class that did all the jobs these people didn't want to do um and, and throughout their tenure there um their worship of god had been beaten out of them so they turned away from god even so which um initially led them into the 400 year captivity again a theme we see all throughout the Bible. It's the one thing you do not do. You don't go off and worship other gods. Or else God will give you will give you unto your enemies. You don't go against his word. Okay? So on a side note, uh we see how blessed the children of Israel are. Remember I was talking about Romans eight twenty eight, uh that scripture. All things work together for good to them that love God. To them who are but it also says a prefix to them who are called according to his purpose as well. And we know that being the children of Israel. So uh, read Exodus ver read Exodus 3, um, verse 6, to understand why um, God came and rescued the children of Israel. And it was, it was because of a covenant. It was because of the agreement that he had made with their forefathers, uh, being Abraham. Right? Because uh, Abraham was called the father of na father of nations or nation, I believe is, is what he was given. But if we go ahead to uh, Exodus verse one, it reads, "And the Lord spoke unto Moses, Go unto Pharaoh and say unto him, Thus saith the Lord, Let my people go that they may serve me." Now again, um, in uh, Exodus eight verse two through three, but this is mentioned in Exodus nine one. Uh, and ten one. In Exodus verse two through three, it reads, "And if thou refuse to let them go, behold, I will smite thy borders with frogs." So, this is God giving, talking to Moses, telling him to go before the Pharaoh, uh, because the Pharaoh's clearly in idolatry. But God is so merciful that even though Pharaoh will not turn for him, will not turn to him. He um, he's still giving him a way out. He's saying, if you just let my people go, right, you can continue doing your dirt. You can continue worshiping your gods. I mean, the end result is still going to be hell, but you know you can live the rest of your life like that, and I won't bother you. But. You just have to let my people go. Simple enough. So God isn't going to tell you to, uh, you know, hit all one, all one, L two, uh, left, right, up, down, elemental P, whatever. He doesn't have you doing backflips, you know. Uh, especially when God has always uh, spoken to me and uh, doing things and leading people, it's always been simple. The only holdup has always been. Us, you know, you and me, our pride. It's always been a holdup for uh, for what he is trying to do in the earth. And like I said uh, in the beginning, I'm, I've met so many people who claim to follow God, who claim to be a, a claim to, oh, well, if God told me to go here, and they don't realize that God has been talking to them. God has been talking to you. Why do you think he's sending signs to you? He's sending signs because you haven't been listening. That's why he's sending you signs. And if you're still not listening, he's going to leave you to your mess. He's going to leave you to the punishment, as we see here. And, and exactly what happened. You know, God's promise came to pass. He said, hey, the borders, your borders will uh, fill with frogs. The rivers shall bring frogs abundantly, which shall go up and come out into thy house. And into thy house. So verse 8 of uh, chapter 8, Pharaoh called Moses and Aaron to entreat which means to beseech or ask so he called them in to ask them to take the plagues away now pharaoh's working on grace and mercy right now he really is because god has asked he's asking 
Now, if he can bring these plagues into Egypt, God doesn't need to ask. He, he, he doesn't need to ask you. But he's being gracious. He's giving grace. He's giving you mercy. Remember, um, scripture says that God requires mercy rather than sacrifice. So he's being gracious and merciful to someone who doesn't even serve him. As a matter of fact, what Pharaoh does, what the Egyptians do, is blasphemy unto God. Absolute blasphemy. But again, he's being merciful. And you see in um, Exodus 9 and 10, 1, again, God has um, Moses, who's finally gotten on, uh, who finally gotten on the program with God and, in, and walking into his calling and, and listening to him. Go before Pharaoh. Ask him again. Ask him again. Ask him again. Let my people go. For if you do, I will spare you. Inevitably, Pharaoh's heart kept hardening. And we know that it was God doing that. Uh, because remember, God can see the heart. So he understands what a person is going to do before they do it. This is the Alpha and Omega we're talking about. He knew the end from the beginning. He is the same from everlasting to everlasting. So eventually, uh, we know that it ended up in the. Uh, we know that it ended up in Egypt being almost destroyed because of Pharaoh's heart. And like I said, God knew Pharaoh's heart, and He knew that Pharaoh wasn't wasn't being truthful with him. So. Eventually, after God brought down the, the, the rainstorm mixed with hail, fire, and thunder on Egypt, finally, the magicians, the priests of Pharaoh's court went to him and said, there is nothing left. Egypt is destroyed. There is nothing left. Let these people go. This this God, this God of the Hebrews, this God of the Israelites, this God of Israel, Elohim is going to destroy us. Just let his people go. Quit being stubborn. So we know that uh, Pharaoh did let him go. Now this is what I was talking about earlier with grace and mercy. Um, Pharaoh had all of this grace. He had all of this mercy. And every single time a plague was visited upon Egypt, Pharaoh did the same thing. Call Call Moses and Aaron. Tell them to beseech their God so that he may remove these plagues off of this kingdom. And every single time, he said, hey, tell your God to remove it and I'll let you people go. God was faithful and just. He gave grace and mercy. So he did. He led up the plagues every single time. But when we get to the end of it, after Egypt has been destroyed and the people of Israel have been let go, there's no more grace for Pharaoh. Because once the children of Israel get out of Egypt, they are then pursued to the Red Sea. And where Moses lift up his arms and the sea parts and they cross through the Red Sea. Right? So Pharaoh is so ticked off that this God did all of this that he wanted to go back and reclaim something that wasn't his and God told him not to touch so there's no more grace no more mercy and we um, read that the after the children of Israel Moses crossed to the other side of the uh, of the sea as Pharaoh's following them God closes the sea and crushes the Pharaoh and his army killing them remember there's no more grace and mercy at this point so grace and mercy runs out you know we've had this fairy tale um and i, I want you guys to read matthew 10 was jesus i think it was 34 through 36 where jesus said i have not come to bring peace but a sword so yes god is the prince of peace but I think it, 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 it's, it, as you get into scripture more, um, it's a fantasy to believe that Jesus just came to just save, 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 save. No, he came to bring us weapons for spiritual warfare. And now it's our job to uh, daily 
pick up our weapons, read, and gain understanding so we can be better fitted for the complete armor of God which we wear in the spirit uh, and to be able to do battle. So um, this is part one, the price of disobedience. The price of disobedience for Pharaoh was death. But it wasn't after he, it wasn't, he had plenty of grace, he had plenty of mercy. He just didn't want to heed those warnings. He didn't want to take the time to understand how blessed he really was. Remember the question I posed at the beginning. So Pharaoh wanted to, Pharaoh wanted what he desired for his life because of who he was following what and the idols, the false gods that he was worshiping. But Moses went after um, God's will and God's purpose for his life. So we see the correlation there with those two. So every day that you wake up is a blessing. Every day that you wake up is a day to uh, to choose God's will, to choose God's purpose. Every day is a, a, um, a day to choose what he told you to do. You know, if he told you, I don't know, if he told you that, um, I don't know, to go outside and get the newspaper, go get the newspaper. You that, There could be somebody out there that, you know, that you might meet. Who knows, your spouse might see you one day. And then y'all get together and just have this ministry, you know, have this couple's ministry. Who knows, he might tell you to go pay for the person behind you. The person behind you might be a homeless person, you know, and then you might be able to talk to that homeless person because you bought that meal and, you know, save his life through Christ, you know, speak life into him, hand him a Bible, like, you know, um, I've done it. So I've done it, if you guys had me do it a few times, I'm just talking to people. 40 minutes. Don't know these people from a can of paint, and we just talking about God, just sitting outside, 40 minutes an hour. Next thing I know, I'm like, oh wow, <laughs> well hey, you stay blessed, and and then I go. So like, it makes sense to just follow God. Of course, He's not going to reveal the whole picture to you. Of course not. He just needs to. Uh, he just needs to know that you are willing to be obedient, and you have that choice. You can be obedient or not obedient. But I say, don't let fear of what you don't understand dictate what you do. You know, remember, he has not given us a spirit of fear, but of love, power, and of a sound mind. All right, so, uh, thank you guys for tuning in for this one. I uh, remember Wednesday's Bible study uh, is going to be from 1 Timothy chapter 4. Very excited about that one. Um, I pray the entire armor of God over you all. And I plead the blood of Jesus over you all uh, so that you may have a hedge of protection around you, your homes, your cars, your finances, and everything on either side, according to Job 110. Thank you guys so much for tuning in and uh, donating your time to learn a little bit more about counting the cost and the price of disobedience. Now, um, the cost was Pharaoh's life. So Pharaoh didn't count the cost of, dis of his disobedience, but that was the price of it. So, um, you guys have a blessed, blessed Sunday. And uh, every day, pick up your crosses and your Bible center and remember to always stay with God.